Welcome back to another episode of Football Tailgaters Podcast, where we talk everything about the NFL. My name is Aaron. I am a Cowboys fan. I got Yams and Andy. Uh, Yams being the Texan Jets fan and Andy being the unbiased sports fan. And today we have three exciting and interesting topics that we are going to talk about. Uh, First off, A.J. Brown to the Eagles. Does that make them the NFC favorites? And then second off, we got Tannehill saying that he won't mentor Malik Willis. Does that make him a bad teammate? And third, we got Hopkins suspended for six games. How will the Cardinals handle the situation? So, first of all, uh, as a Cowboys fan, I'm not excited to have A.J. Brown go to the Eagles at all. Uh, Like, at all. Uh, This trade... With the Titans uh, during the draft day, we were there live when it happened. We just saw the news break and all that kind of stuff. I wasn't really paying attention when the trades were going on. It was all kind of like weird because uh, it was uh, like I kept checking Twitter and stuff like that. And then we would see the picks go on and we'd be like, aren't the Titans supposed to make a pick? But then we realized, oh, they traded for it and stuff like that. But anyways, AJ Brown got traded on draft day to the Eagles with his uh, with his friend Jalen Hurts and there was like a, a video of them FaceTiming each other and they're like so excited to to be together and uh, just want to know what your guys thoughts on that are the Eagles NFC favorites yams look uh, I don't have much confidence on the quarterback Jalen Hurts uh, I don't think there will be such a big improvement but there might be a slight improvement because they do have an elite receiver in, in A.J. Brown. I think he's an awesome player, and I think he helped out um, Ryan Tannehill, which I also don't think is a great quarterback, you know, average. And so going to a team where I th- believe that Jalen Hurts is even lower than Ryan Tannehill, it does improve the team. It doesn't improve his situation, so I'll, um, I do believe that I know last year they were relying heavily on the run. They had Boston Scott running up the field. They had Miles Sanders at times, and they were kind of going back and forth with these two. I'm not sure if there was another one. I think the other one was injured. It was Jordan Howard. I think he was injured. But either way, it was like three running backs they were kind of relying heavily on. And even Jalen Hurts runs the ball because he misses receivers that are wide open. So with A.J. Brown, I see a lot of screen passes, Those you know, those type of passes that I think Jalen Hurts We'll be able to do. I just don't see big splashes. It'll be a slight improvement. But again, my question goes back to a lot of heavy questions heavily on the quarterback. Is Jalen Hurts even the right quarterback for the team? So adding A.J. Brown does help, but my thing goes to the quarterback. Will it help the situation? Maybe slightly. So in short summary, I might see them challenge the NFC East to win it in a division, but not for long. Not for long. I think it's the conversations there in the beginning, maybe a month into the season in the NFL changes. So I don't I don't see them entertaining that subject for a very long time. At least this season. What do you think, Andy? Yeah. Um I mean, I can I can see that. The only thing with the problem with the NFC East is that it's just open. It's kind of open for for any team to get it, except the Giants <laughs> with uh, Danny Dimes. But my, but um, honestly, I mean, you, you could have made a uh, you could have debated that the Cowboys were like the number one. I mean, many people will probably say the Cowboys still, but I mean, they did get. Um, they don't have. Cooper anymore which was a big I mean uh, somebody really big that was part of the offense um, in these last couple years even though he sometimes went out of the field and went in the field but um, he did show up a lot I mean if it wasn't for him um, they probably had a I don't know if they would have won that Viking game with um, with Cooper Rush and they also um, they don't have Smith anymore that um, went to went to the Dolphins as well, so they're lacking offensive weapons. They did draft a, a wide receiver, but we don't know much about that that wide receiver right now. So we'll see with when it's the season when the season comes out. But 
right now with AJ Brown, he was a really big time talent with with Tennessee. Um, even two years ago, when Julio uh, with Julio Jones and him and as as the wide receivers, um, they actually played. I mean, AJ Brown did a really really good job with Tannehill in that offense. I mean, maybe it has a lot to do with the offensive coordinator there. Um, but it, I mean, he did monster points. So with the Philadelphia Eagles, it's, it's kind of hard, uh, to pinpoint if they're going to be the favorites because again, Jalen Hurts is the quarterback. So it's a number of, it's the main uh, position in the, in the football team. So, I mean, if he doesn't play well, then I mean, who's throwing the ball to AJ Brown? It's Jalen Hurts. So if he doesn't do well, then we have a problem. Um, Devante Smith, which is the other side, because I mean, with football teams, you do need like two like beasts as wide receivers in order for one to get catches and, and the other one as well, just so we can uh, move like defense of, um, I don't know, double teaming one wide receiver and leaving the other one open and then vice versa. So, um, Devante Smith, he was the Heisman, uh, winner in college, um, not last year, two years ago. So, he um so I, I I mean I didn't see like too much of spectacular from him last year with the Eagles so we'll see this year how that goes but as of right now would I say their favorites I would say no because Jalen Hurts is the quarterback and I mean we still we and they're still trying to figure things out with the Philadelphia Eagles so yeah I mean we only in 2020 was any uh kind of switching out. Uh, that's when um, Carson Wentz was still there, right? In 2020, because yeah, he, Carson yeah. Wentz was yeah. still there. Yes, yeah. That that's when it was a whole like, oh, who's gonna be the starter? And and they're they were kind of going against uh, Carson Wentz, and and that's when like trade rumors started popping up, and he got traded to the Colts eventually. Um, but we we didn't get a fair analysis of him in 2020, but. Uh, he's not. I wouldn't say he's off. He's not off to a great start in this past season. He uh, he finished eighth in interceptions. He was tied twenty third for touchdowns this past season, and twenty first in yards. And his QBR was a forty eight point five. I don't know if you guys care about that or not, but there it is. If you do, so and he had a sixty one. 61.3 uh, per, uh, completion percentage. So you wouldn't say those are outstanding numbers, but you could also argue that he was kind of trying to figure out, uh, you know, because he's finally the, the captain of the team, you could say. And, and the running back situation they had with him was kind of weird. And, the, you know, they, he doesn't have that many great wide receivers. I mean... Who who of these? Uh, it was so they drafted Devonte Smith uh, last year, right? Or was right. It two, yeah, right. Devonte Smith. They have Jalen Ray, uh, Rager uh, and even Greg Ward. Would you say there are any outstanding wide receivers? So, uh, and I they don't got know. and they got rid of they got rid of their tight end too. Uh, oh yeah, Zach Ertz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they only have Dallas Goddard right now. So it's it's not like he has crazy good weapons or anything, but they're also not garbage players uh, at all. But you would see some of his highlights, uh, Jalen Hurts, and sometimes you you could say like, oh man, he's not really accurate with the ball, and you know he he's he's a good scrambler, so he, he might be like a I I almost see him almost like a uh, like he could be Dak Prescott. But I don't think he'll reach to an insane potential or even get close to Dak Prescott. I think Dak Prescott is a better quarterback because, I mean, if you compare the quarterback situation in the NFC East, like, ugh. And it's not you, – you'd you'd go with Dak Prescott, but it wouldn't be pretty. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is going to definitely – A.J. Brown to the Eagles is definitely going to improve them as a team, you know, but – it, it is going to be interesting to see how they use them. You're mentioning Yams, how uh, they perhaps will use them in, in a lot of screenplays and stuff like that. That that'd be interesting. Uh, we'll see how this goes, but I don't think this makes them the NFC favorites. I think uh, the majority of the people would say Cowboys, but 
like Andy said, it, it's it's kind of like an open door to see who's gonna get the the first the I guess first place in the NFC East. And I, <laughs> well, but, one thing to point now with with the Eagles, I think they're just getting tired of missing out and the wide receivers in the draft because I, what yes, they draft uh-huh. is just it has been awful. I mean. Let's go back to 2019, and they got in the second round J.J. Arcega Whiteside, and well, he didn't last long. Nope. Um, and then, um, what was this his name? Um, Nelson Aguilar. I remember even this guy in in, in Philadelphia. <laughs> the guy who just I drops everything. He, yeah, the guy that just drops everything. There was a guy. There was like a, a fire in, in in Philadelphia, and there was this guy that went in to save. I don't know if it was a baby or I don't know a person, and then he came out in the news and saying, "Hey, well, I was catching babies or something, and not like Nelson Aguilar." <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean, I know the the Philadelphia t- uh, uh, fans out there are really hardcore, so I know that they really didn't like Nelson Aguilar as their wide receiver because he was mm-hmm. dropping everything. So he was a first round in 2015, and well, I, I I can probably tell you that most fans over there didn't like him. Um, and then we also had. Um, um, Jalen Rager, like you were saying, he was a first he was a round letdown. pick, and he was and twenty twenty, and he's not there anymore. Jalen Rager in twenty twenty first round uh, pick, and he was a letdown. So I think they're just tired of us missing out in wide receivers. Oh, and then they had the opportunity of getting CD Lamb, and they missed it. They didn't get CD Lamb. Yeah. <laughs> That's and then the Cowboys were like, and they got angry. I, I feel like this was them like trying to redeem themselves for the CD Lamb thing. Or just be competitive because they haven't. I mean, they they're just a weird team because they look like they're not doing so well, and then they like it looks like they get their act together in the end of the season, and then they make the playoffs. Uh, yeah, uh, it's really annoying. And, and I guess yeah, it is. <laughs> well, I'm I'm you know I I live with a cowboy fan, but so I root for them sometimes. And this is the thing with the Philadelphia Eagles. I say that maybe they'll be in, you know, maybe, maybe. I say in the beginning, maybe towards the end, because they kind of, like you just mentioned, Andy, they're always somehow in the playoff picture. They're somehow in a playoff Mm -hmm. hunt, somehow. So that's why I kind of said they might be there, but in reality, they're not a threat for me. I don't see it a threat. (laughs) I also don't see Washington as as a threat at all. I think... As usual, per usual, probably Carson Wentz will go down. Probably. Well, you know that we haven't had a repeat um, uh, team for the NFC East since like early 2000s. No, it's always always a a different. Yeah, it's always a different team. Yeah, like there's not a back to back like um, like the 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 NFC East champion, the winner of that division. It's it hasn't been uh, repeat since early 2000s. Who won last year? The Cowboys. And the year before that was the Eagles. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, no. That's when Carson no, no, no. Wentz got that hurt, was, right? That was actually Washington. And oh yeah, had, it was like, Washington yeah, against uh, Tampa it was Bay. Washington no, with Tampa Bay, yeah. and they got knocked oh, okay. out the first round. I see. Yeah, but the Eagles went to the playoffs last year. Mm-hmm. Is there an algorithm to this? So if last year was <laughs> Cowboys, who's next? I mean, Giants? in my opinion, it's either. <laughs> I don't think so. Like, no, like, I know, it can't like, be them. Yeah, no, I don't think it, it's it's really going to be a toss-up. But if we really had to pick someone, it would either probably be the Cowboys. I don't know. That's <laughs> If I had to pick one, it'd, it'd be the Cowboys because they're the roster. If you if you go by the roster, they have the better team, the better talent. Yeah, they won like 12 games last year, if I'm not mistaken. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, but I mean, that's but look what well, well, look what that did because they do pl- they play the their division NFC East, which was easy. They're a disaster that and, division. Yeah, exactly. And then the when they played hard teams, they lost to them. So they played like five really hard teams, and I mean, maybe like a couple that were like hard. And it was the like worst division in like the whole league. And it was a yeah. So it's that's not, true. Yeah, it, that's if true. If you're a Cowboys fan, don't get excited just because you won 12 games. That doesn't say much. I, On paper, it looks nice, but but I mean, when you use your eyes and you watch the games, you're like, no, this team can't. Mm-hmm. can't exactly. Make it. Exactly. I I have to say something about uh, you know the NFC East. They're always somehow always on the news. 
And well, that's that bugs me. That's that bugs me. It's too many. It's the team. The Eagles two have a of, huge Two of the teams, base. yeah. Two of the teams have the mm-hmm. most, like, you you could argue probably the most annoying fan bases is the Eagles and the Cowboys. You can, yeah. And then you have New York with the with Giants, and then you have Washington. There's a well, lot of Washington loud, fans yeah. out there. So, yeah. I mean, if you compare divisions to other divisions, I mean, you always have, like, a lackluster in some in, in some um, in the divisions. Like, let's say you're the AFC East. You have Boston, you have New York, right? and Miami, but then you have Buffalo. I don't think that there's a lot of Buffalo fans across the country. You also have, I don't know, the the Saints, Falcons, Carolina, and the Buccaneers. I mean, how many Buccaneers were fans were out there across the country before Tom Brady was there? No, they all jumped on. Exactly. So if you look at the division themselves, it's a, it's a division that's full of big cities and big following. So I think that's why they're, they're in the news a lot because of the ratings. Yeah. Hey man, it, it it just bugs me. It just bugs me. But I I just don't see. I I agree with with Aaron. Well, move to New York. You'll see a bunch of New York stuff there. <laughs> move to New York. Move to New York. <laughs> hey, we're everywhere. There's a bunch of Jet fans everywhere. They just kind of pop up. It was really surprising when we went to the draft. How many Jets fans? Jet there were so many yeah. people. Even yep. uh, yeah, they were even annoyed. Like or not annoyed. They were surprised. Like, how is there so many Jets fans around here? And it was Las Vegas, so it's not like we're like close to New York or anything like that. It was a lot of Jets fan. It was it was really surprising, and and then you have those other teams that you like you didn't really see that much. Like I didn't see that many Cincinnati Bengals fan. I think I no, saw I, like one. I think I saw only one. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so I mean, I did see a lot of Cowboys fans. I see a lot of Raiders fans. Tampa Bay, just a lot of bandwagoners, probably. And <laughs> I don't know. I saw some Green Bay's, a lot of Giants fans. You see, it was just a and, the, and Eagles fans. There was a lot of Eagles. There was. So yeah. if you had to say what division had the most fans there in the draft, you would say I NFC. saw a lot of Eagles, a lot of Cowboys. I saw quite a few Vikings, I'll, I'll be honest. And they were kind yeah. of decked out a yeah, lot. They were, yeah. yeah, they came out and dressed in costumes and all. Um, <laughs> Cowboys, um, the Jets, Giants, a lot of Giants, a lot too. Of Giants, exactly. Washington, of, I didn't see too many Washington. No, um, maybe because they don't have jerseys yet with the Commanders. Maybe they don't have a name. <laughs> I saw logo. some. I, I saw some, yeah. They had hats yeah. with the new logo and everything, yeah. I did see a lot of the. I remember seeing a lot of 49er fans. I saw, yeah, I, I was going to say 49ers. Yeah, that was another team. Oh, that yeah, that's, a, that's, that's a another big, big team, yeah, right? That's another big I, team. I saw a little Do bit you guys of Rams. Think, yeah, there was Rams. I didn't see any. No, I did. I, I saw some Rams. Yeah, it's just that the colors don't look too. They don't stand Nobody flashy. cares. Nobody well, because they were using mainly the white jerseys. I didn't see many of the, like, the blue and yellow ones. Do you think Washington fans are a little like nervous well not all of them right i'm just saying it could be a percentage of fans that might be a little nervous to wear those old jerseys that has like the red skin logos the old red skin logo on it and just people Maybe. like saying something to them i wouldn't i, I mean at least me if i were i wouldn't it's, it's, it's not it's, that it's big a, of a what deal do you call me, but... yeah it's not a big well, deal it's, uh, you know how it's the, a throwback you know how the country is there's a lot of people that are angry with things that are coming up so i don't know there might be a situation that there's a percentage that'd mm-hmm. be like i don't want to deal with that so i'm not just i'm not gonna wear it what did we see someone on the strip saying that they don't call them the Redskins? They call them, you were there with me. They call them the lame skins or the bum skins. Uh, the bum probably skins. An NF- an NF- uh, you know, probably an Eagle fan. You know, it was actually a Cowboy fan. Oh. It was a Cowboy fan. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, that's messed up, lady. <laughs> that surprised me. Yeah, like yeah, like Aaron said, you have a lot of annoying Cowboy fans, a lot of Eagle fans. Yeah. So. And th- that's coming from a Cowboys fan, yeah. Like, I, I'm almost ashamed of my own fan base, of our own fan base. Nah, just, I mean, it is what it is. Just I mean, having fun, right? Yeah, you have, you, they're everywhere. I mean, everywhere the Cowboys play, there's a lot of fans. Um, I remember when we saw the opener in Tampa with, with the Cowboys in Tampa, there was so many Cowboy fans, so many. It was like... Probably 65% Tampa to close to 70 to 30% of it Cowboys. So almost getting to 40% um, of Cowboy fans, almost 50. So getting close to that 50, 50 mark. So it was, it's, they're just a team that just, you have fans everywhere. Yeah. I agreed. Agree. Agreed. Yeah. Annoying <laughs> and a lot. And they're, and they're not going away anytime soon either. 
But I guess we all agree that it doesn't make AJ Brown going to the Eagles doesn't make them a, fa- a favorite to win the no. NFC East. No, no, because no. the quarterback. It's the quarterback. It's the quarterback, exactly. Yeah, I, I think we can all agree here. It all comes down to Jalen Hurts, right? All yep. eyes are on him this season. Yep. You 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 can't say though that I mean right away like oh like do they have to look after another quarterback or something like that? I mean that might be a little bit too early. He barely had one year. Uh, like one complete year where he just played, it was all him this past season. I think season. A, a good rule of thumb is to give a quarterback three years, minimum three years. If you want to get him kicked out of the third year, go right ahead. But at mm-hmm. least three years, just so the yeah. quarterback can learn from whoever he's learning from, being taught or learning the system, practice or whatever, unless he's a, like a... I don't know, uh, has some attitude issues, have a, a, a Manziel issue, and just uh, they just have to get rid of him. So, or I can't think of another one I, right now, but you know what I mean. Especially if they... He, he doesn't have a lot of, uh, uh, like, uh, mentoring on uh, on that kind of stuff. Like, the backup is Gardner Minshew, so... <laughs> Hey, yeah. Who does he go off of? He goes off the quarterback coach and, and you know the head coach and stuff. I think like Gardner Minshew even of... played last year when he when yeah, Hurts got he, hurt. He did. Uh-huh. Hurts got hurt. <laughs> when Hurts got hurt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did, and uh, and he won. But he's kind of on his own in in there. Like he just got thrown into the wolves almost. So I mean, I don't know if you can say like you have to give him a fair shot. Like you said, three years is good. So he's got like two more years left to. So the the organization can start considering moving him away and, and look into the draft or, or pick up a free agent. I think that's trade. a really good uh, segue to the next topic with Tannehill, with the mentoring. Yeah. He uh, he said recently in an interview, uh, let me just pull up the quote here. He said, let's see what he said. I know... Uh, when he was talking about that, he got backlash, and Kurt Warner immediately uh, tweeted out, kind of going against him. But he he basically said it's not his job to mentor, uh, you know, the up and coming quarterback, the one that just got drafted, Malik Willis. It, the the way it sounded, like if you read it off, I don't know about you guys, but it it sounds kind of a little bit harsh to me. Like okay, well, like wow, that's kind of mean. But I mean. In a way, he can he like I can try and see what he's he's trying to like the point he's trying to get to, but in the media nowadays, it's obviously going to come off negative. So yeah, is he considered a bad teammate? What do you guys think? So here's the deal with me because I mean, how you read it, that's how it sounds like when because you can see the clips live um, if you. If you look it up, um, of Tannehill saying these things to a reporter, of him, it's not his job to mentor Malik Willis. So, I'm I am. It it depends on the perspective of the quarterback, in my opinion, and 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 what stage he thinks he is like playing at a level. Because there's there's two types of quarterbacks, in my opinion. There's the ones that think they can really do something and compete to win a championship. I mean, I'm saying that all they all want to win a championship, but there's ones that are like, no, I'm the starter. I should be the person in charge and taking on the reins for this football team. And then there's the second quarterbacks that are the that they know that they're the backups and slash mentors, um, and they're there to just help the football team. They know in their mind, they, I mean, maybe they were told to them and they were, they're just in that career mode that they just know that they're just there to help them and mentor like Joe Flacco or um, oh my I don't gosh. know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't can't remember. I can't think you, of you anybody can, right now because there's a lot a of little bit t- of you can say a little bit of uh, Tony Romo with Dak Prescott. Uh, I mean that was just there, very little, saying? but yeah, I'm. But I don't think so. That's a that's a completely total, totally different situation. I I wouldn't put that as an example. I, um, yeah. but you know what I mean. There's a lot of um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Yam uh, Yams. The he he's been a, a mentor for like so many um, teams. He was for the Jets for a long time. Then he went to the Eagles, and then oh, he started. He's a, the, um, he's McCown? his name is uh, he went for a head coaching job. No, for the Houston. 
Yeah, he interviewed oh, for gosh. a head coach. I know who you're talking about, but it's not coming to my brain. It's not. White tall dude. Yeah. Josh McCown, um, no? Yeah, Josh McCown, McCown. Thank you. exactly. Thank you. So, well, anyways, yeah, McCown, Flacco, and they're just those quarterbacks that they know that they're just help, there to help the team. So, in, in Tannehill's point of view, he... I mean, he's taken to this team to the playoffs twice. Whatever your opinion is on him, it's on his perspective saying, hey, I'm still the guy. He probably got really annoyed when they when they drafted Malik Willis um, yeah, because he even mentioned, like, I brought a lot of, like, I learned a lot in Miami and I, and I brought it here to, to Tennessee, even though they haven't won a Super Bowl, which that's the main goal. But I think he still thinks, like, hey, I can still do this and I can still win. And when you draft this kid, like that's your guys' problem. I my job is to win and to focus on myself and to get better as myself as a quarterback for this team. My my job is not to worry about the my re, my replacement if that's what you guys are thinking. I don't even like you're wanting me to help out my replacement? Like no, that's that's not going to happen. And there is a perfect situation that the same thing happened with Green Bay with Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. Um Brett Favre, he was a star. He wasn't really like if you see like uh, there was rumors and reports that he wasn't really mentoring Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Rodgers was just sitting behind them and just just watching and everything. And Brett Favre was just focused on doing his own thing and winning. So I I think I I side with Tannehill. It's not his job, and 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 he should be uh, like just focusing on getting better himself. That's if that's the Tennessee Titans problem for him to get uh, for for them to teach him or get a quarterbacks coach to teach him or whatever, but it's not Ryan Tannehill. His job is to get better and win a Super Bowl for Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the quote I mean, I... here real quick. What's he the said the full quote said that's part of being in the quarterback room in the same room. We're competing against each other. We're watching the same tape. <laughs> We're doing the same drills. And then he continued to say, uh, he said, I don't think it's my job to mentor him, but if he learns from me along the way, then that's a great thing. I, I mean, I, I agree. I agree with Tannehill. Um, so to answer your question, no, it's absolutely not. It's not, not a bad thing what he said. As, as a matter of fact, I appreciate his honesty. Why would I, me as a quarterback, want to train or mentor someone who's eventually, or it's the plan for the Tennessee Hill, my, my employer, in this case, Tennessee Hill, it's the Tennessee Titans, to replace me with Malik Willis. They drafted him to replace me. So why would I mentor someone to steal the job that I'm trying to win? So Tannehill knows this. Tannehill knows that that's the intention of Tennessee. Tennessee Titans are like, oh, great. You know, you have to, you know, be be a team player. Help us. Well, no, why am I going to help you? You help me keep my job. So, yeah, I prefer the honesty from Tannehill saying, hell no. Setting the record straight to Malik. Like, if you learn from me, you learn from me. That's great. But I'm not here gonna sit down and and sit sit with you with the playbook and tell you which routes, tell you my secrets, what I see. I mean, I understand it's just being human and being nice, but at the end of the day, it's my paycheck, it's my job, and I'm not going to. I'm gonna have my. I'm gonna up my competitiveness because of this. Yeah, exactly. I, I didn't even I, think of that point of just saying it out loud. So like, just getting to a point to Malik Willis to hear that and say like. <laughs> All right, dude. I won't bother you or asking you any questions. Like yeah, I know yeah. how it's, it's our business. relationship this is. This is business. Football's business. I, yeah. It's. I prefer the honesty than than beating by be, you know, by the bush or playing politically correct and all that. No, I appreciate the. Okay, Tana. I know. I mean, we can be buddies. We're business partners, but I understand that we're in competition. I'm here to take your job, and you're here to keep it. Mm-hmm. So Tannehill's right. I I mean, why would I train someone who eventually might or might not, depending on how he plays, take take over my job? It just doesn't well, make any sense. 
I, I think that it's inevitable. Eventually, you're going to get replaced, and that's just, again, business. I think there could have been a better approach to this, ideally. But, of course, every person is different, and he had his own approach. But I think, ideally, he could have he used that part of, you know, I don't think mentoring is my job uh, to mentor him. He could have gone like a, as a more like a lighthearted joke about that. Because, yes, of course, there's always going to be competition. But, I mean, if you're so worried about them, then do your job and play good, dude. So they don't, like, if you played good enough and you did your job because, you know, Tannenhill's not, like, in the top five quarterbacks in my list. He, like, play, just play better, get better, you know, improve. Why are you so intimidated about a new guy? Okay, if anything, that's the way to pressure him. And if I'm, if I'm like, looking up, you know, as a Titans organization, I'm like, okay, good, this is what I want. It looks like he's getting competitive, and, and maybe we get something out of him. But I, I didn't there, – there was just – I think it might have been just unnecessary drama because he clearly, like, unless he just spoke without thinking first. But if, if you think before you speak in that case – you you would realize okay the media is totally gonna twist this up and make it a lot worse than it is because that's what the media does right so right. he could have gone like way better uh, over the situation he could have gone over it way better um like I said lighthearted joke but he just needs to do his job I mean if he's if Malik Willis deserves that job good for him you know like like Yam said it's it's business right it's also business to drafts competition. And see who steps up to the plate and and takes over that QB one spot. It's it's whoever it is, but there's no reason to really go out and say it out loud to people. I mean, yeah, it, it is the truth. It's the it, it is what it is. But I mean, if you're really a good person and you want to go, you know, uh, go with the right way of things in 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 I guess how how it is in the whole process of like getting replaced because you know. You're only getting older and your talent's not going to get better after a certain age. You're going to just decline. So, I mean, it's it won't hurt to just help them out and just be a good person, in my opinion. And there's just no point to say that kind of stuff in, in that I, manner. I just... I don't think he sounded bad. I don't think he sounded bad at all. Um, he, I I, to me, he I, sounded kind of like cut and dry. like not Not like bad, bad. But, I mean, like I said, the media interprets it and makes it worse than it is. Because no, but I mean, we can easier. actually listen to the clip. We can listen to the clip live, and that's how we're interpreting it. Well, because I agree with this is sports. Uh, besides business, it's sports. So it's it, in sports. What what is it? Competition. So, and him as a quarterback, he is telling his team, like, I'm all for my team. And I'm all for getting better and to win. My job is to focus and getting better and not to train this guy. So, and also for Malik, if 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 I'm Malik and th and the quarterback, this quarterback is saying things, I'll be like, you know what? This should drive me as to be very competitive and to beat him in in training camp and to show why the Tennessee Titans drafted me because you suck and I'm better than you. So this is my way of beating. You know who did it the correct way? Um, Russell Wilson, when he got drafted from the Seattle Seahawks, they had Matt Flynn over there in Seattle, and he was going to be the guy. And Russell Wilson, uh, like you're saying, Aaron, he did it. The he didn't say anything. I mean, he was the. I mean, he was the drafted, but Flynn didn't say anything, and and he just won the job clear, clean, and cut during training camp he just showed like he was so much better so if i'm a leak i'll take this out like okay guys i'll show you what i got that's yeah but that's how i would say like it's unnecessarily like okay think of it as like a you're sitting down in an office and you're you're the quarterbacks you guys are gonna be sitting like right next to each other you guys are gonna be you know doing the reps and he's gonna be behind you Oh, and then you just said that, and then now it's just gonna be like this, like awkward start to this relationship. It's like what? There, there is no reason. That, that, that's how I see it. Like, it's not gonna kill well, you if you just, you know, teach him and and show him the ropes a bit. It's not gonna be your whole job, but I mean, you're like, it, it's it's not your it, like main focus. That, that's all I'm saying. Like, it, it's not like he's gonna sit down and he's like, all right, 
you're going to come over to my house and we're going to go over this and that and this and that. It's like, it's like it doesn't even have to go that far. It's just not a big deal. I, he made it a big deal. And it, it's, it's kind of like I continue I, disagreeing with you because <laughs> let's say that if this was a corporate job and this new company got my re- my future replacement and they're telling me to teach him. Like I'm thinking no. this company doesn't really like care believe in me. me. Yeah, they yeah. don't care about me. So why would I? care about them and, exactly. and, and I mean I know what you're saying to be a, a human being and like to help them out or everything like that and I mean I'm he probably is going to be a human being if they're in the quarterback room and he ha- he asks a question and maybe Tannehill just for being a human being just answers it but he's not going to be with him like hey let's let me teach you let's stay after let's stay early I mean let's get here early or let's stay late to learn about this no, yeah, so yeah, he I made it quite agree. clear and- and that's that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying he's gonna do all that stuff. I just said it's 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 more so. It's not as big as of a deal as it is that like that he's trying to make. Like, ob- well, no, it's it's important to him. Obviously, Tannehill, this is a threat to him, but he doesn't have to go out and, and speak to it and, and just like say it to the public because you're forgetting the part that this is the media again and the media is going to twist things up and make it bigger than it is because the media causes drama within locker rooms and that's a lot of the times how there's weird relationship between players uh i don't know what like the first thing that comes off right right at the top of my head like uh when when the media gets involved in this kind of stuff and how it kind of makes it into a weird situation with players we're going to go a little bit off topic with like football, going basketball when when the whole COVID thing happened and Rudy Gobert joked around with the whole like, oh, touching microphones or whatever. I don't know if you guys remember that, but um, uh, he ended up getting COVID and it was like the spiral between uh, uh, Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell uh, between them. And then the media made this whole thing like even bigger between them. And there was like even more issues, chemistry issues. And now there's like a whole breakup. So going back to the football situation, look at it that way. <laughs> the whole media well, is, in that situation is with this the, a bigger deal. Right, right. But in that situation, the media just was just thirsty to grab anything to discuss during pa- pandemic time because they just needed Wouldn't something say to they're talk kinda about. kind of thirsty for this too? Like, I mean, he was just saying something and the media grabbed it and he's like, oh, this is very interesting. Oh, everyone's going to hear this. And oh, man, t- Tennessee well, has a new drama going on between the quarterbacks. Well, let me ask like, you as a Cowboys fan. Let me ask you as a Cowboys fan. Let's say da- a Dak Prescott. He hasn't won a Super Bowl. And let's uh-huh. say the Cowboys just drafted a quarterback like Malik Willis in the second round. And Dak Prescott says what Tannehill said. Would you, well, as a Cowboys fan, would you like what he what Dak Prescott said or would you not like what Dak Prescott said? Well, just knowing what I know of him right now, it would totally be uncharacteristic. But if it happened, I'd be like, well, I mean, he's telling the truth. But I mean, why? You know, like, go out and show it. Don't talk. Just do it. It wouldn't bother me. For me, I would be like my quarterback is focused on getting better and hit. I mean, typically it, that's it, like it what you, it you answer. That's me. what quarterbacks answer. My focus yeah. is not on the league. My focus is to get better and improve my game, right? Mm-hmm. But aren't we tired of the whole political yes. correct thing to say? Yes, so I yes. appreciate that he said yeah. that. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. you know what? I'm not. My job is not. I'm not here. It's not part of my job to mention Malik. My job is to be quarterback and to improve every day. If he learn, learns along the way, then that's great. I think that was perfectly fine. Didn't Tom? I, I mean, I, you I, know what? I shouldn't even say this because I I don't recall. But didn't Tom Brady say this one time with one of the quarterbacks I got drafted one time in the Patriots? Wasn't it Garoppolo? Uh, maybe I think it was Garoppolo, and and he he didn't say it this harshly. If you want to go into political uh, correctness or everything like that, but he, I, I I I'm right now. I'm maybe completely mis- mistaken, but. I, I think he said something in the words like I'm just focusing on my on uh, just getting better or something like that just 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 easier cleaner or whatever. And then with Aaron Rodgers when when um, when Love got got um, hired, I don't remember what Ro- Rodgers, but he I, was he was pissed too. But he was pissed with the situation. So I mean. I bet you, like what Tannehill said, is what was crossing these guys' minds when when they draft the quarterback. Like, what mm-hmm. the hell? So, I I mean, I I don't mind at all him saying it that way. I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. But I mean, we do have <laughs> some players um, take um, taking to social media. Like, uh, I put it on Instagram. 
uh, LaShawn McCoy, um, he actually uh, commented on the situation. Um, he just said, um, um, he just said a, um, a, a, well, he sent the tweet and he's, and this is what he said. If you don't want your mentor, I get it, but don't call yourself a good teammate. If anything happens to you and he needs to replace you, let's pray he is prepared. Winning is the only stat that matters if you are a good teammate. And so I guess a good, it's perspective. That's a good point. It's, it's, that brings up another good point. It is a teammate-based game. Like You're there for your teammates, right? You're not there to... You're there to win. That's you're trying to win, and that's what that's what Lashawn McCoy was basically saying as well. Like, but I mean, it doesn't make you a good teammate. You just go out and say that. Of course, it's not gonna destroy the whole thing, but I mean, it's just unnecessary. It, I'm not saying like, oh, like you have to say certain things. You could have just not said anything at all. Uh, another point, Kurt Warner said. I mean, he he kind of defended uh, uh, the whole like good mentality or good teammate situation and and he said i will never understand that i'm not here to mentor the next guy mentality so for all you young qbs that need a mentor dm me and i'll be that guy happy to help in any way i can like there's just with all the negativity that's going (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah, (laughs) uh, of course but like self but like when you're it, it is a different situation in this case because Tannehill. i mean is he getting any better I know. I think we have. I think we have what we have from him. But he did um, raise everybody's eyebrows when he moved to Tennessee, and he did what he did. And didn't he go to the AFC Championship like a couple years ago? He got really. He got really close. Let me see. He got really close. So, I mean, it's it's a slap to the face, in my opinion. Well, he just he choked in the playoff game. That's that's last year. Last year, yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I think he's he's a decent quarterback. I. So I mean I I understand I mean it just makes it Dang. if you're a play of a, a football team um, a, a a football player with the Tennessee Titans and your your quarterback is Ryan Tannehill and then I don't know your offensive lineman or a wide receiver even though AJ Brown just left and Julio Jones is not there anymore but um and you see them drafting another quarterback. It, it it's kind of hard to give an opinion because you're not in the locker room and you really don't know what these players think about their quarterback, Ryan Tannehill. Can they see themselves? You know what? We're, our football team is ready enough to win the Super Bowl. All we need is kind of like the Rams situation. We just need a good quarterback. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe that could be a situation with them. But, I mean, I can see... I, I, I don't know. Can, Ryan Tannehill saying this... I mean, if I'm a football player, I'm like, I'm... Either I'm I'm just I it really depends on what the players think and what's going through their minds. Yeah, either they want to move on from Tannehill or Malik Willis. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everybody so, thinks different. That's the that's the risk you were taking. And I maybe he did know that risk when he said that kind of stuff. And maybe he didn't care, you know, to each their own. But I mean, you gotta at least acknowledge the consequences of your actions, which is not massive or anything. But I mean, we all know the media is gonna make it a bigger deal than it is, and it's not that big of a deal. But it's also like, I mean, if if we're going in that direction of oh, it's a huge deal, if, which is most likely what it's gonna be, then it was like, well, you didn't really need to say that kind of stuff. But here, here's to mention. Here's to mention. In 2018, that was her last season with with Mariota and. Um, I, they didn't even go to the playoffs in 2019. That's when they got Tannenhill. So he's been there since 2019. He lost the conference, and then 2020 he lost the uh, the what's it called? What what is this one? Uh, he lost the wild card. So they went to the conference in 2019, which was his first year with the Titans. That's that's when you were saying, you know, yeah, they raised eyebrows when 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 he was playing, and he was playing pretty good. But, I mean, he's peaked. Uh, ever since then, he's only kind of capped himself at the conference because he's gone to the wild card. And then last year, he went to the uh, to the division. So, he, he just – he lost it – or they lost the division, sorry, with uh, against the Bengals. So, it it's like you're, you're not seeing him get better. And he's clearly – the Tennessee Titans have run out of patience with this guy – and it's time to move on. That's acceptable. Okay, do your thing. Fine. Don't mentor him. Whatever. We don't need you. Whatever. You know, Malik Willis might be better. 
if that's how you want to play it. And that's how it is. And now he's going to look bad. That and and now it's like, okay, well, look, you were selfish with that. And now now look at your downfall. You know, you're not you're not going to win the Super Bowl because you had I'm not going to say that's because he said that, but I'm just saying like, you know, it's just it just makes it look the only negative that's going to come out to to Tannehill is that other teams like if they wanted him as a back of their league. Oh, yes. heck no. I'm not going to get yeah. this guy. That's just uh-huh. that's the only thing that's going to hurt it. in his resume. No. Yeah. At I this think point, so. no, yeah. I agree with Andy. I agree with Andy. Yes. <laughs> I'll be like, no, I'm, this guy doesn't want to even help. <laughs> yeah, right. no, yeah no. exactly. If anything, this shows that he cares and he's competitive. Yeah, but what? Anything, right now. That doesn't mean he's right going to be now. good. <laughs> no, no, but at least you know that he's going to try to be good. But why would I get a guy that's not even good enough and competitive? Okay, cool, you're competitive, but you're not even going to win the job, so what's the in point? A, in a heartbeat, anyone will pick up Brian Tannehill as a, a backup quarterback, regardless yeah. of what he said in that in that conference i don't know honestly. i don't know i, know. I, I, I don't think i don't so. know I don't honestly think so. because uh, yeah it, right now in his mentality i don't think so if they if, re-signed antonio it, brown they'll tr- just trust me just no you guys are wrong <laughs> that wrong, was a wrong, different wrong, situation wrong, you. <laughs> you know what Let, let's just say that this that this year we, I, i'm thinking that ryan Tannehill is the starter and they go to the playoffs and they get kicked out and the tennessee Titans want to just start mm-hmm. with malik willis I bet you that Ryan Tannehill still thinks because he keeps going to the playoffs that he says I can win with a team, and any and any team that's going to be calling me, I want to be a starter. I I'm agree. not a backup, and then he's getting old, older in age, so new new quarterbacks are coming in or whatever. Yeah. So I think it's going to be harder for him to to get a job. And I agree. I think he does. I think once it happens, they'll see what quarterbacks are available, and they'll see okay, we might have a little bit of a shot. For example. Fitzpatrick. Just going to end it there. <laughs> How can you end it there? What, what about no. Fitzpatrick? He's no. always, he's always been, um, he's always uh, a starter. He's always, a, yeah, he's always a starter. But I, I get, I, I guess I get what you mean, but he, like him in Miami, he was annoyed <laughs> when Tua, when, when they wanted to start Tua to see what he had. He was yeah. like, I've been playing well. Yeah. Oh, and that's the same argument that Tannehill will have. Are you telling me that Fitzpatrick has been given many, many opportunities to be started that Ryan Tannehill won't get at least one more after Tannehill? No, he probably will. Probably, but I don't one, th- uh, probably twice. But I don't think so. Like, a yes. lot of teams are going to be calling. Mm. I, like, with Fitzpatrick, I think that guy knows what he is already. There was at a point in his career that I was like, you know what? I'm a backup. Mm. I'm a I'm a good solid backup. If some if the quarterback gets down, I can win you some games. I, and and Tannehill is not going to think at that way. At one point of his career, and Ryan Tannehill's not there yet. I don't know. He's getting close to it. Because we'll agree to disagree. <laughs> so this is also a new situation for him. I mean, he didn't have competition before. Now he does. So we'll see if he can really step up to the plate. So we'll see how that goes for them. But anyways, we'll move on to the next one. Um, Let's talk about over in the NFC with uh, the Cardinals. Hopkins suspended for six games. Uh, It was um, performance enhancement uh, like thing that they had. Like they weren't supposed to do that. Uh, I forgot what it was. Uh, I don't know if you guys can remind me of that. But I mean, how how did the Cardinals handle the situation? Yeah, performance enhancement drugs. But it, he says uh, he said on Twitter it was well, on accident. Kind of, yeah, he well, said it was on accident. He says he's very careful what he consumes, but it was an accident. Well, he's gonna get to the bottom of it. He says that he 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 apologized or something well, like that. He's gonna get on the bottom of it and he's mm-hmm. gonna appeal it. Well, look. So what what happened to him? And you know, it's such a shame because he is a really good wide receiver. He's an elite. And so this really hurts his character. You know, saying that, leaving that aside, uh, perhaps he was taking this performance, hands, drug, steroids, st- steroids, I don't know what they call it, but maybe it was to speed up his recovery. So this leads me to believe that the Cardinals might have known what was going on with the wide receiver. Because why, why else would you get take steroids? To get stronger? To go, to get faster? I think it's because he, torn it, he, he had a... a Injury, um, mm-hmm. MCL injury. So he missed last year due to that, which 
in my opinion, really hurt Kyler Murray. He struggled a lot, to, a lot of, a lot of the times to get things going with the Cardinals since he left. Um, the Cardinals have, what is it? Tight end hurts. They just got Hollywood Brown. Uh, they got from the Ravens. They have Rondo Moore. I don't know how good he is. I mean, he's some, he's some kind of help. But history shows that the Cardinals need to get off to a good start in the beginning of the season to have a good season. So without D Hop for at least a month and a half, or how many games? Six, five games. He's he's not going to be be there to help. Six games. Well, um, so they need a good start in the beginning. So from what I've from what I was researching, the Cardinals need a good start to continue that momentum. So without him, I just don't see this team being the same. Yeah, okay, they have Hollywood Brown, they have Ertz, but you know, with with D Hop gone, he's an elite receiver. He he really helps Kyla Moore. I'm sorry, Kyla Moore. Kyla, Kyla Murray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. um I just don't see this team the same without him. Mm-hmm. They need to find creative ways to be to be good without him. With 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 Holly Brown and Ertz. Yeah, um, I think this team has has issues beyond DeAndre Hopkins. I know. I think we talked about it in our previous uh, episodes of the podcast when we spoke about Kyler Murray and him wanting to uh, be traded or just needed. He just wants his contract. I I don't think that they're meshing well with the quarterback and what the system with the coach and everything. And I think that the Cardinal organization, they really thought that they were going to be able to go at it and win. Because when they went to get J.J. Watt last year and then Zach Gertz, they're thinking we just need like these small key pieces to just get us to that to that um, to that championship. So I, I think with with DeAndre Hopkins, like getting suspended, I mean, yeah, he does help he does help them like substantially to win more games. But at the very end, they still have some problems like Marquise Brown. I mean, what did he do in Baltimore? I mean, like he was supposedly um, the favorite uh, target over there, but I didn't see him catch that many, many, many touchdowns. It wasn't like he was a, like a, jumping off the pages and in, in Hollywood he's and a, fantasy. A, he's a deep threat. Yeah. But yeah, even if a, he was a deep threat, threat he's a deep threat but that doesn't mean that he didn't do that much and then they have aj green which i mean he helped a little it wasn't like 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 uh, like beast mode like he didn't like really really put him into a next level even with zach Gertz. so i don't think deandre hopkins suspension is gonna be like Oh, because of him, the season is over. Like, no, they need to figure out their situations with the quarterback. Their wide receivers aren't that amazing. I mean, you just said Rand- uh, Rondell Moore. I think he was a draft of uh, second draft pick in the second round. I'm sorry, in 2021. And I mean, we haven't heard of him. I mean, they just let go of Christian Kirk, um, James, James Connor, the running back, did okay. They have a decent offensive lineman, offensive line. So. I don't know. I just don't think that that DeAndre Hopkins being suspended is just gonna like throw everything away. They they need to fix their problems. Mm-hmm. I I think that it'll definitely affect them. No matter what, we're we're just talking about maybe less wins, but this is only gonna make them worse, obviously. But like you said, Andy, they have to adapt. So I think in this case, they would have to, you know, they do have Marquise Brown. We didn't mention that. AJ Green, uh, whatever, Rondell Moore. It's a good wide receiver core, but not like exceptional. Not like what the Cowboys had the past season with Amari Cooper and, and um, uh, CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup. But, I mean, maybe we could see them go into the run game more. Maybe we could see... Uh, uh, more like uh, read options, you know, where uh, Kyler Murray could run it or pass it or hand it off. A lot of that more and not be dependent on the passing game as much. But we are definitely going to see a hit on them. And we it's going to be interesting to see what they do to adapt to them missing basically uh, almost half the season without uh, DeAndre Hopkins. 
But if that's the case with the running game, I mean, they need more help in the running game. Chase Edmonds, which played really well for them last year as their second quarter running back behind James Conner, um, he left. He's in Miami. So, again, I go back to they have a lot of things that they need to get fixed before they can even do anything. I They have a certain situation. I mean, they're in a division with the with the Rams, the 49ers, and the Seahawks. And I put them in third place. I put the Rams first. Second is the 49ers. Third is the Cardinals. And then fourth is mm-hmm. the Seahawks. I agree. So, them, I mean, and they have to do a lot to even... They have to really figure things out in, in order for them to compete in that division. Yeah. I, I think their their chance to win it and maybe win it all was last year. That was their time to make some kind of playoff movement, big movements last year. It's it's gone. They're I I think they're going either down or they're they're going down on their way to rebuild. And I give this year probably the last year for Cl- Cliff Queensbury. He's in the hot seat. Really? So it's, oh. yes. So I just don't see, and you're right, you're right. It's not just the hop. It's just a whole bunch of issues with that team right now. Well, that is a pretty good point, yeah, because the whole team's kind of weird right now, and they're not going to get any better right now. It's, like you said, it was It looked that way. And, yeah, year. it looked that way earlier in the season. Before the season started, it looked like they were getting their, their they act together, and they looked like – yeah. That yeah, everyone was talking really well about them. I like Kyler Murray. Um, I don't know right now because sorry, l- earlier in the season last year. Yeah, last year before oh, okay. the season, they yeah, were ta- course, they, they were course. talking like yeah, well, they, maybe, were, high they up. were high up. They were like saying like they can do good things and everything. But then it looks like like Yams has been saying like said that with Cliff Kingsbury, he might be losing the team a little bit. I mean, they did get some veterans with Zach Ertz and JJ. Well, maybe they can rally the troops together, the team, but I don't know. Uh, the, the main guy is the quarterback. And when your quarterback is not happy, it just doesn't put a good taste in your mouth. So we'll see. I don't, I, I right now, how it is right now, I don't see him make the playoffs. But there, but I mean, they're gonna get some help with this, and um, I guess these, this new rule that there's more teams in the playoffs. So if it was the olden times, I would say I don't think they're gonna make the playoffs. But with this new rule, they might just just do it barely. Yeah. So, um, I I think it's really close between 49ers and and um, Cardinals. They both have. Uh, a weird situation right now, right? Their quarterback's kind of a question mark. Uh, well, I wouldn't say so much the coach for the 49ers, but, I mean, just the team in general, they're just kind of in, like, a weird spot, wouldn't you say? Like, it, it's kind of awkward for them. It, it's not comfortable. And it's almost like a gamble to, to, I guess, if you were to bet on them to go all the way or not. You can't really trust either team, right? No, no, neither. No, Mm-mm. yeah. You'd rather put your money on the Jets to go all the way than. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Honestly, know what you're I do feel more no. confident on the Jets. <laughs> yeah. The Jets no. definitely no. have a chance. No, no. Well, I don't know what you guys do something this sure. coming year. I don't know what you guys are smoking. One hundred and ten percent. Put your money on the Jets. No, no, they can be a wild, a, a wild card type of thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's better. That's better than not it. No, they look, could, I, I give them. Jimmy chance. Garoppolo went to the NFC Championship, guys. Like, what are you guys talking about? I know that they don't they, they were thinking of trading him, but that team is still put together. They just need. They, okay. I mean, I don't what know if Trey Lance is the Samuel answer. Leaves? What he's not going to leave. Samuel? No, he's not leaving. He's uh, not going to leave. I mean, side I, note: he's he's followed the team back on Instagram and on Twitter. So just he's probably way. wants like a billion dollars or something. That every team is like a heck no. I know that Jets offered him a really bad deal or whatever, but no. And then him saying, you, I really I don't hurt think they're him. Gonna give him. They're not going to give him the deal. He's going to conserve himself this coming year, and he's going to look for some, some something better elsewhere. That's that's. Then what it I might think that's it might affect the team because he says like he just wants to be a wide receiver. So that re- I think that really affected his situation of being traded because other teams were like, well, we want you how the 49ers have been wanting you, and 
So I think I don't know. I th- I think the 49ers are are more a little bit more put together than the 49er situation. And that's because of the coach. Honestly, it's you can see the difference between coaches. The Cardinals falling apart. The 49ers, they don't have all the pieces, but you can see that they're still together, except for Debo, that he wants his money, which I don't blame him. I'm all for players getting paid. So to go back mm-hmm. on your on the standing, so you have the Rams be number one. Right. 49ers, two. 49ers, number two. Okay, I agree with you. And Cardinals, number three. And then fourth is the Seahawks. And that's because, I mean... Russell's gone. Russell's gone, and they have Drew Locke. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see it kind of even between those three teams. I don't know. I think we have to end it here because nah. this is awful, awful, <laughs> awful. How do you... Okay, how do, uh, this, this the, the Seahawks the Seahawks. same as the 49ers? Right. Hey. Honestly, no, why are no, you no, dismissing no, no. Luck? How uh, Luck? Why am I dismissing? Yeah. What the heck has that guy done? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay, in all seriousness, I do. I can't. I can't give you a firm answer on either Cardinals or the Forty ers It can one of them can be number they, two. They got second place last year, the Cardinals, and they went to the wild card and got demolished by the Rams, thirty-four to eleven. So that's just this little something to go off of. I think they they still have a good chance to make it in second. I think overall they're a better team than the 49ers, especially with the weird situation they have with Debo. If if they really restrict them to just a wide receiver, or yeah, or he gets what he wants, I guess, to just stick as a wide receiver, that might affect things in San Francisco and and the whole pressure with Garoppolo to see if he moves on or not, you know. I I think I would put the Rams definitely first, and then I would put kind of comfortably the Cardinals, and then the San Francisco, and then Seahawks last. You guys are nuts. <laughs> I I I just can't tell you Cardinals or San Francisco number two. It's because it depends. I don't know anything about Lance. I don't know anything about him. No, but I'm saying the 49ers because Jimmy's still there. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't know too much about Lance. Um, I'm seeing reports that uh, they that there's um, f- that the 49ers are a little underwhelmed by him, meaning that they're not like super happy. Right. And that, but I think that I mean we I mean this is just right now. I we have to. Keep we have to see him play. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I I get annoyed by reports or the organizations getting annoyed by quarterbacks, and then they don't see. I mean, it's a different situation when it's practice and when it's on the field. So, get him on the field, and we'll see what he has. But right now, I I believe more in the 49ers because of the coaching staff. Kyle Shanahan, he I respect him a lot as a coach, and it looks like Cliff Kingsbury, he he needs. He needs help. He doesn't have the whole locker room together. His quarterback is like pissed off and unfollowing the team, just like Debo did with the 49ers, even though I think that the team and the 49ers are more put together. But I just think they they have better pieces, the 49ers, than the Cardinals. So we'll um, another point is that last year, it seems like, oh, my gosh, um, pull it up real quick. I mean, in the division, the Cardinals were 4 and 2 and San Francisco is 2 and 4. I don't remember who they beat San Francisco, who were the two wins against. I I'm guessing maybe it was Seattle. Let me see here. But I mean, their record's not that good anyways. And the Cardinals went 4 and 2 in the division. So wouldn't you say they're the better team? I I just I just I'm I'm stuck. I don't know what to say. I I think it's either it has to be either I will go the 49ers and only and only because of the head coach putting them number 2. <laughs> yeah. So and then the the, 40, the the 49ers lost uh 31 to 17 against the Cardinals. They lost both games, actually, 49ers against the Cardinals. So that that's not something to just kind of brush off, right? No. Uh, I, I, I don't remember if Hopkins was playing in any of those games because he was struggling with injuries last season. But, I mean, 
either way, I mean, they, it's not like they did get a uh, Marquise Brown, and I, I, that's definitely a good piece. It's not a bad addition to them. So they didn't get worse. It's just like like you guys said, it's an awkward situation in that locker room, and they need to figure things out to just be a better team and and you know try to win something. <laughs> and I don't know something better than just a wild card. You know, uh, the Forty yeah. Niners w- went to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Old news. They went to the Old Super news. Bowl. Old news. And and they went to the Super Bowl. And it's they went the to the NFL. It changes it for you. And they went to the NFC Championship last yeah. year. I'll I'll leave it at this. Look, history shows the Cardinals need to have get a good start in the beginning of the season in order to have a good season. In this case, D Hop is gone for a month and a half. Okay, that gives them struggling times at least half the season. So, with that being said, I will agree with you, Andy, just this once. <laughs> 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 that <laughs> the 49ers will come number two and the Cardinals will be number three. But I also agree with Aaron. They do need to have more than just a wild spot, wild card spot, but I think they'll end up getting a wild card spot and it eliminated right away. They're just lucky mm-hmm. that they're in the NFC and it's less Perhaps. competitive than the <laughs> AFC. So they'll, I mean, yeah. they do have a shot. I'm just saying that it's not like they're going to be able to win it all with these pieces that they have and losing DeAndre Hopkins wasn't I mean they still have a lot of issues so that'll I'll end my part there uh, all right I I guess that that's pretty much it um yeah pretty pretty interesting interesting we'll see I hope I'm right I hope I think the Cardinals will get a uh, number two spot in the division and I think they'll go to the wild card but I won't say anything past that but yeah um thank you guys for listening uh using your time to listen to us uh this has been the sports or sorry if i keep saying that football tailgaters podcast this has been aaron yams and andy uh follow us on our socials uh andy can you say them yeah um follow us on instagram and football underscore tailgaters and you can see in uh, there in our And the profile page in the Instagram, you'll be able to see the link for our our episodes. And so just just follow along and and give us some comments. Think us what you guys think about the podcast. Any topics that you guys want to want us to talk about? Um, If you want to even say a, a, a shout out, we can also do that as well. So, yeah, follow us along on Instagram. Again, it's on football underscore tailgaters. Awesome. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you guys. Bye. Peace out.